Hello and welcome <coughs> to today's lecture on battery driven system design and here is the agenda of today's lecture. I shall give a break, brief background of this battery driven system design particularly we shall emphasize on why battery driven system design is necessary. Then we shall discuss characteristics of batteries which are commonly used in modern embedded systems and then we shall consider how the characteristics of these batteries can be modeled by using various, various techniques. Then we shall focus on battery defense system design, various approaches for this purpose and battery scheduling and management approach and battery aware task scheduling. Uh, we have seen that there is a strong proliferation of uh, portable computing and communication equipment such as laptops, pump tops, self tops in recent years. In recent years, these battery operated portable systems are increasing at a very uh, large, I mean rapid rate compared to servers and other systems. And uh, this growth rate of this portable equipment is very high, we have observed that. And one important characteristics of these batteries that not only I mean by these systems is that not only the number of such equipment is increasing, battery driven systems are increasing, their complexity is growing. Let us focus on one of the most common uh, portable equipment that is cell phone. Initially cell phone was developed primarily for voice communication. Now, we are using cell phone not only for communication of voice, for sending SMS, for, uh, for uh, accessing internet, for, uh, for, uh, for uh, receiving radio, uh, FM radio, for, for capturing picture and so on. So, the number of functions is growing and as a consequence complexity of these devices is increasing as a, uh, increasing uh, with the use of with the, with the rather increasing uh, need for uh, the users and <coughs> at, as these devices are battery operated, battery life is of primary concern. So, we find that battery is an integral part of these systems uh, because the, the, if the battery fails, the system fails. If the battery uh, power, I mean battery power is reduced, the capability of the system reduces. So, uh, battery plays a very important role in these uh, portable uh, devices. Unfortunately, the battery technology has not kept up with the energy requirement of this portable equipment. That means, the energy requirement, requirement of these portable devices is increasing because of the increasing complexity of different applications, but the uh, battery cap the energy that can be delivered by battery is reduced is not increasing at that rate. We shall have a look at the curve I mean plot of that later on. <coughs> then commercial success of these products depend on weight, cost and battery life. Since battery uh, life rather the battery dictates the commercial success, success of the products. Why? You see the size of the battery will decide what will be the weight and uh, how long the battery will last that will also uh, decide the commercial viability of the product. That means, whenever you go for buying a laptop, you will demand that the uh, between two charging it should sustain maybe 12 hours. Similarly, whenever you are uh, trying to buy a cell phone, you, you will see that the weight is small. Uh, but it can consumes much less battery and uh, these are the that means weight, cost and battery. Of course, cost is another important para parameter. So, what we can say that battery is significantly influencing the commercial su success of these products. What is the alternative? The alternative is to develop low power design methodology, so that these products are become commercially viable. And as a consequence, uh, a new approach has emerged which is known as battery defense synthesis approach. That means, now you have to consider battery as part of your system design. Earlier battery characteristics were not uh, ignored. It was assumed that battery will supply power, uh, it will supply uh, desired amount of current maybe for certain duration. 
but if we use a battery driven system design we shall see the life of the battery can be longer that means after you charge it it will give you power over a longer duration in other words in some situations the life of the uh, system will uh, decide the battery life for example in sensor networks sometimes the sensor networks are deployed in jungles so there is no way you can uh, replace the battery or recharge the battery that means the battery with which it has been deployed uh, will decide how long that system will work. So, uh, uh, battery driven system synthesis is very important and we shall see how it can be done. I was uh, talking about the uh, widening battery gap, here we find that the power consumption is increasing rapidly in modern systems. This is a little older, uh, older you know. Uh, older uh, data, but even in recent data the rate is increasing that means the complexity of these systems are increasing as a, as a result this pink line as you can see uh, which is representing the power consumption of uh, battery operated systems is increasing at a very high rate. On the other hand you can see the uh, energy density of batteries that means the uh, by energy density is represented by <coughs> energy density is essentially represented by ampere hour is the you know the energy that can be stored in a battery per uh, kg. That means, larger the weight obviously, the capacity will be more. So, per kilogram of uh, battery, what is the energy that can be stored in the battery? That is that is how the uh, energy density of a battery is presented. You can see the energy density is definitely improve improving with the improvement of technology, but their improvement is uh, uh, is not really uh, much. So it has improved, but compared to the require power requirement, it is much less. That means the gap between the need and what actually can be supplied by the batteries widening with time. So, how these ga this gap can be bridged that is what we shall discuss. So, uh, this particular uh, diagram has been taken from a paper uh, on battery driven system design a new frontier in low power design by Kanishka Lahiri, Anand Raghunathan, Sujit Dey and Devasis Panikrahi. It was published in a international conference of on VLSI design. So, uh, now let us uh, have a look at the different uh, features of, a, of batteries that we use to uh, characterize a battery. Number one is energy density of which I have already mentioned, number one is that means the ampere hour or per kg, this is, this is a very important parameter and this the, uh, we, we, we would like to have this particular uh, parameter to be improved. That means, we want larger energy to be stored in a, uh, in a battery of smaller weight. Second important parameter is life cycle, cycle life. What is cycle life? Cycle life is as you know, these batteries operated are rechargeable. These batteries which are commonly used in these embedded systems are rechargeable question is how many times charging and discharging can take place. For example, uh, if you are using uh, nickel cadmium battery, nickel cadmium battery can be charged and discharged maybe 4000 times. So, that means 4000 times the battery can be charged and obviously, it can be used uh, when the discharge will take place. So, that decides the life cycle and longer it is, it is better than environmental impact. What is environmental impact? <coughs> environmental impact is uh, you know uh, to realize these batteries you are using some uh, chemicals which may be toxic. For, for example, in nickel cadmium batteries you are using cadmium. Cadmium uh, is a very toxic material and obviously, those nickel cadmium batteries are to be handled with care and after the nickel cadmium battery becomes uh, you know uh, unusable, 
you should not discard it uh, anywhere. You should carefully uh, dispose it off so that it does not go to the environment. Otherwise, it may be harmful to the uh, to, to to life. That means the it has impact on the environment uh, because it can it releases toxic material. Then safety. Safety is another uh, feature which is very important because how safe is the battery when you use it. Uh, we have uh, we have uh, read in the newspaper that uh, a particular uh, device cell phone or some embedded system has exploded. How it has exploded? Actually, uh, when the battery terminals that means the positive and negative terminals are sorted, some batteries will, uh, will uh, explode. That means, if you draw a very large current, it may lead to some kind of explosion. So, how safe is the battery? Uh, that is uh, that is also very important feature of the battery. Then comes the available supply voltage. So, available supply voltage is another uh, feature. Available supply voltage. You know that different batteries can supply different voltages. For example. Uh, the popular batteries that we use, those lead acid batteries that, that can provide I mean parcel 1.5 volt and similarly nickel cadmium battery will provide 1.2 volt, but our requirement in the system may be different. For example, uh, when we are using a 5 volt supply, then you have to uh, use several batteries to get that 5 volt or 12 volt or whatever it may be. That means, the, the voltage that is generated by the battery has to be taken into consideration and that is your available supply voltage. And last, last but not the least is a charge discharge characteristics. Later on we shall see whenever uh, you will be charging a battery, you cannot really charge at a very high rate. That the charging rate is usually much smaller than the discharge rate so, and also how the discharge rate influences the characteristics of the battery. These things are to be are, uh, are very important uh, whenever you go for battery driven system design. Now, let us have a look at some battery technologies which are commonly used. The most uh, commonly used technology is nickel cadmium which is matured uh, and widely used in portable systems in cameras, cell phones and in many uh, mp3 players and so on. It is popular and it gives you high discharge rate that means, it can supply large uh, load current and uh, however, the limitation is that uh, it has got low energy density. Energy density is small compared to other technologies and as I mentioned cadmium is a toxic material. So, it has got toxicity that means, it is uh, it is not very I mean uh, safe to use you have to use use them very carefully. So, this is the characteristics of nickel cadmium batteries which is one of the most commonly used batteries. Then comes the nickel metal hydride. Nickel metal hydride is also used nowadays and it has becoming popular because of large energy density. So, energy density is very large, but unfortunately the life cycle is very shorter compared to nickel cadmium batteries. That means, you cannot really use it for a long duration. The number of uh, charging and discharging can do is uh, small, uh, small compared to nickel cadmium. Then inefficient high discharge rate that means, the discharge rate the rate at which it can supply current to the load is not very good. So, it is inefficient moreover it is costlier than those nickel cadmium batteries. Nowadays uh, we are using lithium ion in most of our uh, you know cell phones, mp3 players and other systems primarily because of much higher energy density, longer life cycle. However, it is unsafe when used improperly. As I was mentioning that lithium ion batteries particularly when uh, the, uh, the battery terminals are sorted, it may lead to explosion. That means, you have to uh, use them very carefully. And then the, then the last one is a emerging technology lithium polymer. Um, it is very attractive because of smaller size, ultra thin and larger energy density and also it is safer, but unfortunately it is not yet uh, commercially very successful. So, it is a emerging technology. So, the most popular uh, present day technology is lithium ion, 
the other uh, technologies like nickel cadmium and nickel metal hydride are also used. Now, coming to the energy density of different batteries, as you can see, uh, nickel cadmium batteries has lower energy density. That means your watt uh, watt hour, uh, watt hour per kg for uh, nickel cadmium is little more than uh, 40. On the other hand, for nickel metal hydride, it is more. It is close to 70, uh, little more than 75. And for lithium ion, it is maximum. It is little less than 100. Uh, watt hour per kg and uh, reusable alkaline batteries which are not commonly used in portable systems which were earlier used initially it gives you good uh, energy density but not as high as lithium ion and that lithium polymer which is a emerging technology as you can see it can give you 120 watt hour per kg uh, but uh, this technology is not yet matured and not commercially available. So, we have to really uh, use one of these three nickel cadmium, nickel metal hydride or lithium ion in our uh, uh, portable battery operated systems. Let us now have a look at the basic principle of battery discharge. Uh, we know uh, any battery will have two node two uh, terminals one is anode and another is cathode this corresponds to lithium uh, uh, th 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 thin oil uh, chloride battery here as you can see you have the lithium anode and carbon cathode and you can see you have a electrolyte in between uh, electrolyte and then lithium ions go from uh, anode to uh, cathode whenever you discharge it. And so, the basic components are anode, cathode and the electrolyte suitable type of electrolyte that you have to use. So, whenever you are uh, doing the discharge oxidation of anode uh, results in generation of electrons and that leads to flow of current between cathode and anode. This is how really uh, the uh, battery discharge takes place and in simple terms. And whenever you uh, draw more and more current, then more and more reaction sites are made unavailable as reactions proceeds. What happens as the uh, currents are drawn, electrons flow, uh, electron, electrons, uh, electron flow take place. Uh, what happens? These reaction sites gets covered by some uh, material, and th those surfaces become unavailable, and that is the reason why gradually the lesser and lesser surface area is available and lesser and lesser uh, current uh, I mean can be supplied by the uh, battery uh, after the initial charging. So, and again whenever you do the charging then those uh, those, re those uh, reaction sites get uh, are made uh, available to the user. So, this is how charging and discharging occurs in a battery. Now, <coughs> Let us now have a look at some of the electrical characteristics of the battery, because ultimately you will be using a battery and you have to look at the electrical characteristics. And these are some of the important electrical characteristics. One is your open circuit voltage of a fully charged battery. That means, after you charge a battery and if you do not apply any load, it will give, give some voltage. This is known as VOC or that means, the open circuit voltage. This open circuit voltage is usually um, uh, higher than the nominal voltage. For example, those lead, lead acid batteries that is uh, the typical voltage is 12 volt can give you open circuit voltage of 13.5 or even 14 volt whenever uh, it is fully charged and no load is connected to it. Then comes the uh, V uh, card that is your cut off voltage of a fully discharged battery. That means, uh, after uh, a battery is fully charged and then if you start drawing energy from the battery that voltage level goes down and for example, a 12 volt battery the voltage can go down below 11.5 or 11 volt when the charge is uh, I mean it has no energy stored in it most of the energy has been discharged. So, this uh, by, by measuring these voltages you can you can uh, give an approximate idea about uh, the condition of the battery. You will find that in your laptop, 
if you if you click on the battery symbol you will say that 75 per percent uh, energy is being stored how that is given actually it measures that uh, that voltage that means your uh, that v that uh, voltage across the terminal and by measuring that terminal it can tell that how much energy is presently available from the battery <coughs> so and uh, so far as the capacity is concerned there are several types of capacity number, number one is theoretical capacity so theoretical capacity is the upper bound of energy that can be stored that means whenever a battery is being designed uh, depending on the uh, weight depending on the size uh, depending on uh, the materials that is being used uh, theoretically one can calculate how much really energy it can be supplied so this is the theoretical uh, capacity so usually theoretical capacity may not be same as the standard capacity so standard capacity is energy extracted under standard conditions so that means uh, whenever you are using the battery in standard conditions what do you really mean by standard condition standard condition is that you have to maintain a particular temperature you have to draw uh, current at a particular rate and uh, based on that how much energy can be supplied so this standard capacity can be less than the actual capacity actual capacity is the amount of energy capacity than ba that a battery delivers under a given load that means uh, this actual capacity is the cap capacity of the battery that you get whenever you are actually using it so in that condition you have to take into consideration the thermal effect for example the ambient temperature can be small low can be high for example it has been found that the uh, that the uh, the current delivery capa uh, the uh, capacity of a battery is dep heavily dependent on temperature those who are using cars they know that uh, most in most of the situation the car battery fails in winter the reason for that is temperature is low at that time and as a consequence the battery is not capable of uh, giving high current so uh, temperature effect has to be taken into consideration and not only that the the current uh, discharge profile uh, you are not really drawing a constant current from the battery which is the which is done in uh, whenever you define standard capacity normally uh, you draw sometimes heavy current for example whenever you are starting a back car you are drawing very large current to start the uh, motor uh, on the other hand when it is running battery is essentially uh, not supplying much current so similarly in laptop when you turn on the laptop then it draws heavy current from the battery and subsequently the current that is being drawn depends on the application you are running so uh, you have a varying load and under the varying load condition varying current is drawn from the battery and under this condition the actual life or actual capacity that we will get will be different from the standard capacity and theoretical capacity. So our what the in uh, from this we can really define the objective of battery driven system design. So what is our objective? Our objective is to maximize actual capacity actual capacity of the battery that will be uh, drawn whenever you are using it in practice. So maximize actual capacity by taking into consideration the characteristics of the battery. Okay. So uh, that is the goal of the uh, battery driven system design maximizing actual capacity. Now uh, as I was mentioning that charge discharge characteristics is also very important and uh, actually uh, this happens because of these two effects one is known as rate capacity effect what is rate capacity effect so rate capacity is effect is dependency between the actual capacity and magnitude of the discharge current uh, is dependent uh, on the rate at which uh, the uh, current is drawn uh, the reason for that is you know as i mentioned whenever you are discharging a battery that the active area uh, that is present in the battery will decide how much uh, current it can supply. So, uh, if you draw at a larger rate obviously uh, more area will become unavailable. If you draw, draw at a slower rate more, more area will be available 
uh, for uh, I mean more active area will be available. So, when discharge rate is high surface of the cathode gets coated with insoluble comp compound and this prevent access of many active areas and consequent reduction in the actual capac capacity of the battery and that is the reason why uh, rate capacity uh, plays a very important role in deciding the actual capacity. That means, if you draw at a slower rate you will get uh, longer actual so I mean larger actual capacity. Then another important feature is another characteristic is recovery effect. So, it depends on the concentration of the positively charged ions near the cathode. That means, uh, the rate of diffusion is affected by this uh, by this particular phenomenon. That means, concentration of positively charged ions near, near the cathode that decides the uh, I mean the charge uh, that means, the, the current driving capacity. So, when heavy current is drawn rate at which positively charged ions uh, are consumed at cathode is more than supplied. So, uh, that means, whenever uh, you are using a battery and that time uh, the positively charged ions available to you reduces. Now, if you keep the battery uh, in ideal condition for certain duration, then again the that uh, positively charged ions will be available. Uh, it is a common practice those who are driving cars they know that suppose you try to start the engine, it may so happen the, the engine will not crank, it will not start. What the driver do? Normally, they will find that they will uh, switch it off, switch off the uh, battery and then wait for certain duration what actually they are doing they are unknowingly using this recovery effect. That means, the battery will recover more and more positive ions will be available near the cathode and as a consequence the necessary current that can that is necessary to start the engine will be available now. So, this is the recovery effect. So, these effects are to be taken into consideration in, in the system design to get larger actual capacity. Now, whenever you do this you have to use a model of the battery. So, battery models capture the characteristics of real life batteries and to predict their behavior under various conditions of charge and discharge. So, that is the uh, requirement of the model and there are different types of model number one is analytical model. So, analytical expressions are formulated to calculate actual battery capacity and lifetime under different conditions such as variable and constant load. That means, it takes care of the uh, charge discharge characteristics and based on that it can find out that if you draw this much of current uh, this uh, if this was this is the initial uh, charge and after drawing this much current at this rate this will be the charge left. So, this type of equation uh, is provided in the analytical model. So, it captures the rate capacity and the thermal effect. So, it also takes into consideration the impact of temperature that means, thermal effects and, but no not recovery effect. So, analytical model cannot take care of the recovery effect. So, Pucart's formula uh, the which is represented by q is equal to k by i to the power alpha. So, this is this simple formula was proposed by Pucart to uh, model the battery where k captures the electro electrochemical effect that means, battery is essentially a electrochemical device and uh, those electrochemical effect has to be taken into consideration and those those are taken care of by this parameter k and for different batteries the value of k will be different and alpha represents the rate capacity effects. That means, as you draw uh, the i to the power alpha where alpha is the uh, takes care of the rate capacity effects. That means, as you discharge the battery at a particular rate then uh, the uh, charge that is that will remain uh, present that can be uh, obtained from this. So, analytical models are a uh, simple way of modeling battery and there is another uh, type of model based on electrical circuit model. So, in this case model battery discharge uh, using an equivalent electrical circuit that is a spice model. So, uh, in this particular case you can really consider it as if it is a uh, electrical circuit and you can uh, by using spice model 
the uh, it can represent the characteristics of the battery and in this particular model is capable of modeling rate capacity and thermal effects then coming to the third uh, model uh, that is known that is known as stochastic model so in this case battery is represented by a finite number of charge units and a, and the discharge behavior is modeled using a discrete time uh, discrete time transient uh, stochastic process so uh, this is a little complicated uh, technique but uh, this can take into account variable loads uh, rate capacity and recovery effects but not thermal effects and particularly in this case computation requirement is modest coming to the last model that is your electrochemical model so this models electrochemical thermodynamic processes so it takes into consideration the physical construction what is the length what is the weight what is the thickness and various materials used and so on so actual physical uh, uh, dimensions are taken into consideration and this can analyze many discharge effects under variable loads including rate capacity effect thermal effect and recovery effect and obviously this electrochemical models are most accurate but computationally in intensive that means it will take uh, long time to perform computation so uh, later on we shall see out of these four models analytical models are uh, more uh, commonly used uh, in our analysis and later on we shall see how it is being done in some applications now uh, i have discussed about some of the important characteristics of these models so based on this how do you really design battery driven system i mean how do you perform battery driven system design uh, there are several approaches number one is frequency scaling so uh, information from a battery model is used to vary the clock frequency dynamically at run time using workload characteristics we have seen that you know that rate capacity effect we have that rate capacity effect tells you tells you that if you draw uh, with a smaller current i2 compared to i1 then you get more actual capacity that means if you draw at a smaller rate you get longer i mean longer life or larger actual capacity so how do you really uh, draw smaller current as we know uh, uh, based on the uh, workload condition you can find out what is the frequency at which a particular system can run so you can reduce the frequency and as you reduce the frequency uh, the the dynamic the power requirement for the system will reduce is it will draw smaller current we know that that because you know that power dissipation is proportional to cl vdd square f so if you reduce f the current will decrease and as a consequence the 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 it will give longer actual capacity so you, know, you can do frequency scaling so to uh, depend uh, to uh, take care of the uh, workload and based on that you can get get longer uh, uh, longer life of the battery then you can do supply voltage scaling as i have already discussed select vdd to find the best trade off between the battery capacity and performance so what you can do depending on the workload condition you can do voltage scaling so if you reduce the voltage as you can see here if you reduce the voltage the uh, the current that will be drawn will be reduced and as a consequence you can match the current drawn with the workload condition and that in turn will lead to uh, lesser current and longer actual capacity and larger battery life then we can do dynamic power management so in this particular case the policy that controls the operation state of the system according to the state of uh, charge of the battery that means what can be done uh, see if we find that the charge has uh, charge is getting is getting depleted you can as we uh, to take into account the recovery effect we can uh, we can switch off some of the subsystem for certain duration and battery will recover again you can turn it on, turn it on that means you can do what is known as um, uh, power management so you can you can shut down turn on and you can give uh, required uh, recovery time for the battery 
to get more actual capacity. Then uh, uh, we can do battery aware, aware task scheduling. This, this tailors the current discharge profile to meet the battery characteristics. So, I shall discuss uh, some technique uh, for that. So, battery scheduling and management as I was mentioning efficient management of multi battery systems. Nowadays, uh, you know uh, sometimes we do not use a single battery, you can have multiple batteries in a system and uh, whenever you are using multiple battery in a system for example, uh, you will find that uh, when high reliability is necessary instead of using single battery you will be using multiple battery and those batteries need not be uh, uh, uniform of same type, the batteries can be of different types. So, in such a case what you can do, you can do static battery scheduling. So, uh, there are different ways of doing it, serial scheduling, random scheduling and round robin scheduling. That means, say suppose you have got 4 batteries, so use battery 1 for certain duration, then you can you, uh, you switch over to uh, battery 2 and in the meantime battery 1 will recover, then after using battery 2 for certain duration you can use battery 3 and, and after again after using battery 3 we can go for battery 4 and so on. In this way you can do it serially one after the other, uh, uh, serially means after battery 1 is completely exhausted you will go to battery 2, uh, then battery 2 will be exhausted then you will go to battery 3. So, this is the serial method. On the other hand round robin is you know uh, you are using it for certain duration, it, it the battery is not yet fully exhausted, then we will switch to battery 2, again use it for certain duration it will not be fully exhausted, then you go to battery 3. In this way you will uh, you will be doing say battery 1, then battery 2, then battery 3, then battery 4, then battery 1. So, in this way it will be or you can say you can you will come back to this. So, in this way you will be doing uh, using the battery uh, in a round robin fashion. So, whenever you are using this bat the batteries in round robin fashion, fashion obviously each battery will get enough recovery time and as a result actual capacity will increase. Then th uh, terminal voltage based battery scheduling. So, here makes use of the state of the charge of the battery. Suppose you have got 4 batteries, so it is may not be uh, necessary that it may not be true that all the batteries will have equal capacity. So, it may depend on how old is the battery, whether how much uh, what is the actual capacity of the battery, I mean what how much uh, charge discharge has taken place of a particular battery. It by that I mean different batteries will have different energy stored in it. So, you can take into account that by measuring the terminal voltage. That means, uh, accordingly you can schedule the batteries instead of making it round robin, the battery which has large capacity you can use it more than a battery which has less capacity. So, in this way you can do a more intelligent scheduling based on the uh, state of the charge of battery. Then discharge current based on battery scheduling use heterogeneous batteries with different rate capacities. That means, uh, you know you can have uh, different batteries which can provide different current efficiently, different amount of current efficiently. So, depend, depending on the workload, you can select a particular battery which matches the uh, discharge profile uh, of that application. So, in this way you can have discharge current based battery scheduling or battery efficient traffic shaping and routing. So, network pro protocol for example, nowadays uh, battery driven system uh, systems are battery I mean battery operated systems are used in communications sensor network and many other applications. So, they are network protocols and communication traffic patterns play an important role in determining the battery efficiency and lifetime. So, in that case uh, depending on the network network protocol that is being used and the communication traffic pattern that means, uh, that uh, that is being that is uh, that is uh, inherent in the system that can be used in determining the uh, battery efficiency and lifetime. So, in other words I mean in uh, to summarize this what I can tell you can do suitable scheduling and management to to get uh, to maximize the actual battery capacity and longer life of the entire battery system. 
Okay, coming to uh, the last topic that is battery aware task scheduling. So, here as I mentioned the objective is to maximize the battery lifetime and the various characteristics which you would like to use is rate capacity effect and a higher rate of discharge leads to lower available capacity that is known that has to be used then recovery effect the battery voltage recovers uh, in idle periods that we know. So, that has to be used another uh, feature which has been observed that is known as non increasing profile. So, non increasing load sequence leads to lesser drop in voltage I shall discuss it in more detail. This has been taken from a paper uh, entitled static task scheduling algorithm for battery powered uh, dynamic voltage scheduling system. So, this was published in IEEE transactions on VLSI systems and the paper was by Prince C. Choudhury and Chaitali Chakraborty. So, uh, uh, in this paper they have utilized these characteristics of the battery and then they used uh, uh, dynamic voltage scheduling and this is that rate capacity effect that I was mentioning. For example, uh, here uh, uh, the battery is supplying for, for 400 milliampere and the task will run for 6 uh, minute. So, this is a minute 6 minute 400 milliampere. So, a particular task requires that and whenever this is done then 30.9 percent voltage drop take place uh, and after 11 iterations of this. So, uh, this is the this is when you are discharging at a very high rate. Then you can do voltage scheduling and if you do the voltage scheduling then you, ca you can reduce the uh, current obviously the op board actually it will not be voltage scheduling voltage and frequency scheduling as you do that then uh, the current can be reduced but the execution time will incre increase as, as I have mentioned. So, energy drawn from the battery is same. So, 8 into 300 is same as 6 into 400. However, in this condition uh, you know 26.9 percent voltage drop occurs uh, and after running this and it survives for survives 14 iterations instead of 11 iterations. That means, it can this task can run 14 times compared to 11 times in this particular case. Similarly, whenever further voltage uh, and frequency scheduling is done, uh, scaling is done, the current can be reduced to 200 milliampere and obviously, the execution time will be 12 minute. So, in such a case 22.7 percent voltage drop occurs and this will survive 16 iterations. And finally, uh, you can reduce the voltage and frequency in such a way the current drawn is 100 milliampere obviously, it will take longer time to execute the task that is 24 minutes and the voltage drop is 18.7 percent and it will survive 17 iterations. So, you can see you are getting uh, a much larger actual capacity instead of running the task 11 times you are able to run it 17 times and because of you are getting larger actual capacity. So, you are drawing same energy, but uh, you know the actual capacity that you are getting is more. So, so that is the rate capacity effect and another uh, feature that I mentioned that is your non increasing profile. So, suppose you have got 4 tasks to be executed and duration of each of them is mentioned 7 uh, minute, uh, 5 minute, 8 minute and 10 minute and these are the deadline times. So, uh, by after meeting the deadline times uh, you can schedule them and uh, which have different currents as you can see here the scheduling has been done where the uh, task which draws larger current has been scheduled first then the task which draws next higher current is scheduled second then uh, the third one is the next uh, I mean the which draws lesser current than the first two and finally, the task which draws minimum current is scheduled. So, this is your non increasing profile. So, you can schedule it in this way or you can schedule the other way where the task which draws minimum current is scheduled first and then in a increasing order you schedule the various tasks and obviously, whenever you schedule these tasks in this manner uh, your uh, I mean the deadlines are not uh, violated. So, so, both will serve the purpose, but the the you can see the voltage uh, that is present that is analytical Q 
uh, in case of uh, in that is uh, that is being that is present in the system in the non increasing profile is 31724 uh, and compared to non decreasing to 26145 and terminal voltage is 4.04 that means the battery is in better condition or rather battery has got more charge which is represented by this compared to the next situation. So, 3.94 is lesser voltage. So, the voltage drop in the first case is 23.6 in the second case is 32.4. So, this shows that non increasing profile uh, this non increasing profile means you are decreasing the current discharge is better in battery operated systems. That means, initially the battery is in good condition. So, it can it has larger current drive capability and as you keep on using it lesser and lesser active area is available. So, it is better to uh, schedule in a non increasing profile. So, uh, you, you can uh, use these three phenomena rate capacity effect, uh, then recovery effect and non increasing profile effect using them they developed a, this paper they have presented a uh, scheduling task scheduling algorithm and they have shown uh, how much uh, how the uh, actual capacity is increases <coughs> and the battery model that was used is a analytical model instead of using this simple model q is equal to k by i to the power alpha by Pukert uh, they used a little complicated uh, battery model and uh, this actually takes care of variable current and on the other hand for constant current this uh, yeah. reduces to uh, al, uh, this reduces uh, to this particular expression here uh, alpha is equal to this alpha where is y alpha beta this is the alpha. So, alpha reduces to this uh, in case of uh, in case of your uh, constant current. So, this particular Madeley model was used in that paper. So, subsequently uh, 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 one uh, some of my students work in this area they developed another approach and uh, here a set of task graphs each with task in the task graphs specifying the start time, execution time and deadline time and current loss was provided and the algorithm work in two phases an initial uh, earliest deadline first base schedule is done and then in the second phase uh, selection of an optimal pair of supply voltage and body bias. So, in the previous paper uh, uh, what they did they used only dynamic voltage scaling. So, that it reduces only the dynamic it takes care of the dynamic power. So, in this particular work uh, not only dynamic power reduction, but leakage power has been taken into consideration. So, reduction of leakage power takes place by using uh, body bias body biasing and uh, the in the, uh, the as I said the, there are in works in two phases. In the first phase initially an earliest dead, uh, deadline first base schedule is made provided the task dependencies are not violated. Then the task schedule is modified by scheduling the task in non increasing order as we have seen non increasing order gives you better result of the current loads provided the deadlines and task dependencies are not violated. From the first task check if the battery fails at a task then some modification is done then the down scale the failed task to minimize voltage and check again if the battery survives then check the deadlines. If the deadline fails then the repeat the same production uh, procedure with previous task if this goes on till the last task the deadline and the dead, uh, goes on till the last task and deadlines fail then the battery fails to schedule. So, there are situations where the battery will fail, but in uh, in situations where it does not fail we get a schedule and that schedule is uh, used in the second phase. In the second phase it takes the schedule obtained in the end of phase 1 as input starting from the last task. So, here we are starting the last task. So, you have schedule task 1, task 2, task 3 in this. So, you start with the last task and the slack obtained at the end of the task is utilized to get optimal pair of supply voltage and body bias. That means, slack is being used to do the scheduling to use uh, body I mean sub that uh, supply voltage scaling and body biasing. They are combinedly done such that um, the reduction in uh, power dissipation there is maximum reduction in power dissipation. So, mini minimum current is drawn from the battery. 
then this procedure is followed until either there is no more slack or further sl sl scaling down is not possible. So, the output of the second phase is a schedule that maximizes the battery lifetime without violating the deadlines. So, and uh, here is some experimental result. So, these are the tasks, these are the uh, execution times and various deadlines and these are the currents which is being drawn. So, uh, uh, schedules were done without dynamic voltage scaling and reverse body biasing. So, the energy consume is 177.07 joule and when only dynamic voltage was scaling was used as in the first paper that I have shown, they are the there is significant reduction. You can see energy consumed is only 26.62. So, percentage reduction in energy 84.96, but whenever we use dynamic voltage scaling and reverse body biasing as it is done in the second paper, then uh, you can see the energy consumed is much less 12.76 and uh, reduction in energy is 92.79 percent. And moreover, uh, there is some technology dependence as we know the leakage current increases uh, or static power dissipation is more in in smaller dimension technology. So, some experimentation was done by varying the average duty cycle uh, of the task profile for two different technology generations. So, with point, uh, using 0.18 micron technology, uh, the modeling was done. So, the first line the and that red line on the top is without dynamic voltage scaling and without reverse body biasing. Then if you use reverse body dynamic only dynamic voltage scaling you can see there is significant reduction in the energy consumed uh, whenever the duty cycle is small. So, duty cycle is 10 percent, 15 percent. So, as the duty cycle increases that means the uh, less and less uh, idle time is available then you can see the energy consumption reduces and when 40 percent duty cycle is there then uh, it becomes I mean that means there is no idle time when you can do uh, dynamic voltage scaling. So, it, uh, it the, then, then the, uh, the energy, energy consumption becomes same as the, as without dynamic voltage scaling and reverse body biasing and you can see with reverse body biasing there is a, a more reduction in energy. And for in case of uh, 70 micron technology you can see the, the energy consumed is much more because the cage current is much higher and, uh, high and there is substantial reduction by using reverse body biasing. Uh, so, with this is with dynamic voltage scaling that um, green curve and the lower curve is using reverse body biasing. So, you can see with reverse body biasing the current consumption is very, very small, energy requirement is very, very small up to 25 percent duty cycle and as the duty cycle increases that means, uh, ideal time reduces then uh, there is a lesser scope for dynamic voltage scaling and reverse body biasing and energy consumption increases. So, uh, and actually on running 100 task profiles with varying percentage of task this is the result uh, that we get and uh, the, <coughs> the two curves for one is uh, with this is percentage reduction with dynamic voltage scaling only and this is using dynamic voltage scaling and frequency scaling and uh, with reverse body biasing. So, we find with 70 nanometer technology there is a big gap uh, between uh, when you use dynamic voltage scaling compared to when you, you when you use both reverse body biasing and dynamic voltage scaling. So, from this we can conclude that uh, as the duty cycle increases uh, the utilization increases, the reduction in the energy consumption also decreases because of lesser available slack and as the technology process technology further gets lower, the energy due to static power becomes insignificant and the algorithm using reverse body biasing become more efficient. So, uh, uh, with this uh, we, we have come to the end of today's lecture. So, we have seen how you can take into consideration the characteristics of the battery to uh, uh, to prolong the battery life by or uh, by increasing the actual capacity of the battery thank you